Hello, hello. Welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, on this episode, a viewer named Steve reached out and he's requesting our help out in Savannah, Georgia. So, I put the team to work finding some of the best and worst artists that we could find out there. And what do you say we start with the worst first? Here we go. Alright, we're starting off with Mr. Jimmy Griffin. Working out of Resurrection Inc. there in Savannah, Georgia. Now, on their website, uh, resurrectioninc.com, you can clearly see they were voted the best tattoo shop three years in a row. Now, I have no idea who voted or <laughs> they're talking about the whole wide world. I, I don't know, but uh, I'm, I'm a little uh, mistrusting. But if you guys want to check it out for yourself, Jimmy Griffin underscore tattoos is his Instagram. And this is what you're going to see when you go on there now. Now, guys, uh, uh, I'll be honest. This is this is some of the worst that I saw. But geez, he obviously posted it. He's very, very proud of it. You know, wanted the world to see this one. And I'm not sure why. Obviously, we're struggling with this hair. Really, really struggling. I think he took the lazy approach. He was streaking it with just the, the knife edge of his shader mag. And this is what you get. And uh, he apparently didn't want to use any other color just in black. I don't know if that's what his reference photo looked like or if he was just winging it or if this is custom, I'm not sure, but it did not turn out good. And this just solid chunk of black for the ears. Very, very disappointing. Let's check out some more animals though. Oh wait, all of his animals he does the same thing on. Just this heavy black streaking. Very, very disappointing. I'm not sure. Uh, I think I know what he was going for with the speckling, but it just does not come across as like a pointillism tattoo. Uh, another thing I gotta point out is in all of his flowers, the leaves were just very disappointing. Overly simplified, just solid black shading. You'll see it as I go through here, but overall, just really kind of rugged, etchy looking stuff. Like, I see what he was going for here, but it just misses the mark, and it's, uh, it's just painful to see. Very, very dark kind of pig nose going on on this bear, and very little detail in the eyes. Uh, something's off about the angle too the bear is looking to the left here but the teeth are in a straight row so it looks a little little bent a little warped uh definitely not his forte and this one was a cover-up he was covering up these hands but uh i don't know i just don't know you guys i don't think that's much better even the nose on this girl is bent what the hell and these eyes very major mistake I, i've talked about it in past episodes you don't put white in the whites of the eyes especially not on somebody with this dark a skin tone that's just going to turn into like a, a muddied up kind of tan color it's not going to be bright white in the end but uh let's keep going um this one was you know from a distance that doesn't look too bad does it but uh i still am going to pick it apart because i'm still seeing just that heavy streaking with the black strange choice of white dots in the whiskers here but the whiskers themselves are not white although they should be and then on the nose of this line here look at this small nostril giant nostril <laughs> i think he was kind of taking the quick route just kind of doing a heavy dark contrast but at the end of the day he was accent accenting the wrong parts of it and uh, adding too much shadow in other parts there shouldn't be and still just having a really hard time making that hair look like nice soft hair so i just don't think that these sort of animal realism black and gray kind of portrait stuff is his forte at all but let me show you the flowers again with just the heavy dark leaves throughout uh, i did see a lot of roses that were just really kind of simplistic roses there's no real light source anywhere to speak of it's just kind of each petal is sh shaded independently and usually using dark or just medium tones there's not much in the way of definition or clarity to it a lot of them just look jumbled like this and here's the same thing look at these leaves just heavy dark black as simple as you can and again if you were to see these roses from five feet away you, you can't see really what that is because you're not seeing any light source where's where's the sun shining from where's the light reacting to the petals it's just sort of simply shaded off each petal and it's kind of disappointing to see especially from a distance just going to be a blur and here is, ah, look, look at that dove. Uh, I don't know, guys. Is it just me or is there something wrong with that dove? I don't know. Uh, that dove is on something for sure. But uh, again, with these leaves, look at that. Just heavy, dark. Yeah, no veins in them. No, like, 3D waving or bending. Just as simple as it gets. It's very disappointing. Very lazy, lazy artwork. And with this rose, it uses a lot less shading and a much higher contrast. But it, it's it's not really looking like a nice, clean, high contrast piece. Like, it's intentional. It's just looking like laziness. Like, he's really not that great at these light gray tones or blending from dark to light. This was one of the best ones I saw. Again, still had just the simplest leaves. Simple as you can imagine. But I will give him props here. This is on a side piece right here. And as you guys all know, most people have really squishy, stretchy skin right around here. We refer to it as the ditch because it's just really, really elastic skin. And it's very, very hard to get your needle to puncture properly when the skin is so stretchy and loose. So the fact that he did really smooth lines in here, I got to give him credit for that. Um, and even the bold lines up here, the, some of them look a little fainter. You could tell maybe uh, his angle was a little off or his depth was a little off. 
but overall this piece was just miles above the other ones that I was seeing. Yeah, until I get to more of this kind of stuff, uh, I could see he's trying this no-line technique, right? And that's something that if, if you're going to advance as an artist into doing tattoos with no outline, that's a really advanced technique, and it's something you really need to learn from another artist. It's really, really hard to get good at it just by winging it. You need to be around other artists who, who have experienced it and done it well. But you also really need to have your light source really nailed down. But again, this one has no light source. So the whole thing just kind of looks really strange. Just hard to really discern what petals are flowing where and all that. Also looks really strange that he did an outline of this butterfly without doing an outline of that. But maybe it's an unfinished piece and, uh, you know, can't be too harsh yet. This one, uh, I had high hopes. I'm a big fan. This is Charlie Day. For those of you that don't know, Charlie Day from uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And if he wouldn't have put that in the caption, I'm not 100% sure I would have known that's Charlie Day. Because, again, with this no-line technique, it's just not his forte. And with this hair, we've already seen with doing kind of hair wisps like that, it's not his forte either. So you get this same kind of chunky-looking hair here. And then in the teeth here... Teeth are really difficult to do. You don't want to outline them, but you also have to create edges where there's edges. But here, he just did white. So it makes it look like he's getting ready to go in the boxing ring. He's wearing like a mouth guard, and that's just really a strange, strange look. He also kind of heavily darkened the outer rim of the eyes. It makes it look like he outlined the eyes. That's a big no-no. I've talked about that in the past. If you're going for realism, you don't want to do outlines around the eyes. But also... His nose is bent too, so what's the deal with just, oh man, Jimmy, you have a hard time with these noses, man, they all just look really crooked. It also kind of looks a little strange that there's just solid black circles in there. You might see a little bit into the nostril, you wouldn't have necessarily just such a solid dark one. So I mean, from a distance, this one might look a little crisper, a lot more like Charlie, but the closer up I got, the more disappointed I became. Uh, and I... I think black and gray obviously is not Jimmy's style, but a lot of what he does is also Americana, American traditional like this. And his American traditional is definitely better than his gray work, but man, when I start really zooming in, you can see these circles here definitely need help. Some of the outline here, the depth is just off. You can tell where there's certain parts where the lines just don't connect or they get really faint in places. That just means that as he was running his line that maybe he ran out of ink midway or maybe he had to lift it up like on a long line like this. He had to stop in the middle and then he went to dip his ink, came back to it and started again. But right there you get this sort of faint spot. And so that's just a really not clean, really kind of quick way of tattooing and you're going to get these little errors when you do it. Um... Yeah, so I'm also seeing a lot of this sort of chop work. In, in all of his blending, you would see this choppiness. And I spoke about this in previous episodes as well. This is a red flag. It's something that uh, clients can look out for when you're really zooming in on that shading. If you're seeing these hatch lines, these chop lines, it's not a desired effect. It's not something artists do intentionally. It's just a, an adverse side effect to your machine not running at the proper speed that your hand is. So if your hand is trying to whip out that shading a lot faster than your machine can keep up, that's what you're going to get, that chop. Um, but overall, Jimmy, uh, with his work, I did not see uh, really smooth, consistent line work. I did not see a lot of solid color fill-in or blending. Uh, there was just errors all over the place when it came to his gray wash shading. So overall, I just cannot recommend him, guys. But stick around. We did find somebody in Savannah, Georgia that we're going to showcase for Steve here. You're going to love it. Stick around. All right, guys, before I move on to the next artist, real quick, I just want to remind everybody that if you're out there looking to get a tattoo and you want our help finding a tattoo artist, it's no problem. Just send an email to thehackhunters at gmail.com. Let us know what city you're in and let us know what style of tattoo you're looking to get, and we'll definitely help you out. All right, that's it. Now let's get back to the artwork. Let me introduce to you guys Robert Madeira. This is the artist I want to showcase for this episode out in Savannah, Georgia. He is working at CocoLocosTattoos.com. You can check him out, CocoLocos Body Art and Design, LLC. Now, they have an incredible, beautiful website. Honestly, guys, go check it out. This is just a spectacular website, and it showcases how clean and just professional-looking their studio is as well. A lot of great artists there. They have an amazing roster. But I want to talk about Robert specifically. Robert Madeira on Instagram. Definitely go check him out. He's got some amazing work up there. Let me kick it off by talking about his animals. Boom! Look at that! Just a stark difference from what we were seeing with Jimmy Griffin's work. You can see, well, first off, the backdrop shading. Very, very smooth gradation here. Dark, medium, light. And it just fades off really softly. And that's what you really want to find as a client uh, when you're looking for black and gray work. You want to find an artist that can smoothly gradiate from dark to light. This is not an easy thing to do. It's time consuming. It requires multiple levels of ink. So you can't just whip out your black quickly the way we saw Jimmy doing it. Now, another thing with the hair, obviously, major, major difference. 
Now, with Jimmy Griffin's work, we were just seeing large, chunky whips of hair that he probably just used a large, ma a large mag shader to do. Like, some artists will just tip their mag sideways and kind of use the knife edge of it to create that. And that's okay if you can do it well, but obviously Jimmy was struggling. And Robert here, he's either using that knife edge properly or he's getting out a fine liner and actually individually doing each one of these hairs. And it pays off. Holy crap, does it pay off. Look at how beautiful that looks. Amazing glare in that eye, too. Now, this here is what I would say is Robert's M.O. He does a lot of heavy, contrasted realism stuff, and it's beautiful, beautiful stuff. It's it's my favorite kind of artwork to check out, especially in tattooing, because I think it really it has an amazing longevity, especially if you get an artist that can apply that black really, really well. Um, then it's going to end up being a, a kind of tattoo that stands the test of time and the kind of tattoo that you can see from a, from a distance, and you're, it'll have a lot of clarity to it over the years. Now, obviously, he used some sort of filter here to make this, uh, to reduce the glare and to make the colors look richer, but I love the fact that he also posts the original, and boom, there it is. Uh, and this shows it in a natural light, too. It looks like they might have went outside and got sunlight. This is kind of a trick that a lot of artists use to get a really good photo as they'll take a, a photo in sunlight. And you can see here, even in this natural photo, unedited, how rich that black looks. Now, of course, I don't want to deceive anybody. This, you know, it's a brand new tattoo. It's not going to look that dark, uh, you know, two weeks from then when it's fully healed and everything. But still, you can absolutely tell by looking at this that he knows how to saturate black very, very well. And he's got his depth and realism down very, very well. Again, look at how smooth that gradation is. We're not seeing any of that sort of chopping or hash lines that we were seeing before. Uh, and here's a great example of it. Uh, he can shade these uh, bridge of her nose here beautifully, the cheekbones, everything. Those light and medium grays just blend very, very smoothly. Uh, another thing, I wanted to zoom in on these white dots on her nose. He could have just, and I think a lot of artists would have just took, you know, their white and just done a big dot of white right there. But he individually put little dots there so that when you zoom out, you're seeing the texture of her skin there. Like you're seeing every pore. Beautiful little trick, beautiful little add-on. I just got to give major props. Now, here's another thing that really, really impressed me because this is something that I will often turn down. Uh, not because it shouldn't be done, because I'm just not as good as Robert is here at it. And that's doing portraits of black folks on other black folks' skin. That's very, very difficult to do. I think I mentioned it in the past before that when you're doing a picture of somebody who has dark skin on somebody who already has dark skin, it can turn out really, really jumbled and, and really hard to read, especially from a distance. Another thing that blew me away about this is it's a cover-up. It's actually a cover-up of that same portrait. Somebody kind of did a hack job on it, botched it a little bit, the client came to Robert for it, and he just knocked it out of the park. Just beautiful. Just amazing. You can see that detail so much better, so much smoother blending around the cheeks now. And it stands out, but it's not too dark to the point where it's going to not be legible, you know, after it heals. Very, very impressive stuff. Uh, this one, just for its artistic nature, just beautiful. The double helix kind of fading in. Very artistic. It shows that uh, he's absolutely uh, an artist at heart, and he loves what he do. He loves what he does, and he has a passion for it for sure. Uh, the Pennywise one, again, this such a large, dark area of black, but you look at it overall, the whole image overall, and uh, it's just amazing how he's creating these these scenes uh, using such high contrast, but they're these scenes that definitely are very legible, very crisp, and it uh, looks like they're healing great as well. Ah, just beautiful work. I'm going to kind of flip through these guys. Feel free to pause it and check them out. There was just so many of these awesome pieces on his portfolio. Ah. Another great example of it, man. Just beautiful stuff. Now, I had to showcase some of his color work as well. It looks like uh, he has no problem blending colors or applying colors, which sometimes artists, when they, you know, they become a one-trick pony when it comes to black and gray work. And so I love to see it when an artist uh, is also good at applying colors because they really are two different application techniques. And so you have to learn them individually as an artist. Now... Speaking of color work, I had to show this one, and I know a lot of you are going to say, like, this is not, you know, one of these giant, epic, you know, huge sleeve pieces like I've been showing. But this is the kind of thing that you can really find out the nature of an artist through, because look at how perfectly clean this is. Just beautiful outline to it. Um, he did a really smooth job of blending yellow from black. That is difficult. Trust me when I say, if, if for all you that are not tattoo artists out there, blending yellow from black is not easy to do. It often ends up looking muddied or chopped up, but he did it great here. There's a kind of a debate in the industry, the best way to do it. He found a great way using uh, blending caramel tones off of his yellow, and it just looks super, super smooth. Same with this gradation from the black to the red. You're not seeing any chop effect or any stuttering in there. It's just so smooth the whole way around. Also, this midline through the circle, just to shade it so that it's dark on the bottom lip there, and then it kind of transitions here, and it's dark on the bottom lip there, and it gives you such a beautiful 3D effect when you zoom out. This just tells me so much about him as an artist. If you just would have shown me this one piece, I would have told you this is absolutely an artist that I would approve of. 
This is the last one that I'll show you guys because it just kind of blows me away. For some reason in this one, he showed his stencil. And this is just a stencil reference that he worked off of before he tattooed it. And it blows my mind how little detail there is in there. <laughs> you know, when I'm going to tattoo something like this, every single one of these little specks, I got to put it in the reference. I'm just insecure like that, I guess. I got to have every detail in there so I don't forget it. But this just shows that he's really a great artist, a skilled, intelligent artist when it comes to this sort of stuff. He just needs the rough shape, the basic uh, shape of it when he goes to tattoo it. And then he's freehanding in all this texture and, and all these fine details. And that to me is just supremely impressive. So Robert Madero, just killing it. I would recommend anybody go to you. Guys, definitely go check out his Instagram. And uh, also all the other artists there at Coco Locos. I wish I had a, a longer video. I could uh, showcase more of them. But they put together a really good team there. So definitely go check them out, guys. And of course, he is Hack Hunter approved. All right, you guys, that's it for this episode. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you get notified. We put out new episodes every week. We go to different cities every week, and we might be coming to your city soon. So stick around. We'll be back next week. And uh, in the meantime, if you're hunting for an artist, don't forget to zoom in. All right, we'll see you next week. Bye.